Yo, what's up guys, Mary Pellier and I'm back from the first ever regional in the UK that was hosted on the 18th of April 2015 in Sutton Coalfield. This was the first ever major event that I've actually ever been to. But before I actually go into that, I'm actually going to save that for a later date because I do plan on uh, uploading a summary video of the whole regional explaining everything that went off from my point of view. So definitely check out that once I've actually uploaded all the battles I did in fact have. So today we're here with round one versus my round one opponent, which was James Hart, of course, in the Swiss rounds. So by the time, by this time, I was actually, uh, I wasn't nervous. I was actually really excited to get into the battle. There was a really funny story that happened uh, just before we was about to battle. But like I said, you'll hear that on the summary video. So uh, looking at team preview, as you can see, I am in this team, which uh, I've actually been working on a while, a Mega Salamence team, which does consist of Mega Salamence, Clefable, Heatran, Terrakion, of course, uh, Rotom Wash and Ludicolo. My team is on the top. And looking at my opponent's team, is running a few unorthodox Pokemon, to be perfectly honest. But at the same time, these are definitely the Pokemon that scare me the most. It definitely catches me off guard. So I do want to be wary and uh, ready. My opponent's team is, in fact, Gardevoir, Articuno, Bastiodon, Togekiss, Pachirisu and Lapras. So like I said, a, a very interesting team. A very uh, interesting team to go against in uh, round one. But I'm nonetheless still looking forward to it. So without further ado, let's just get straight on into the battle, shall we? So I'm actually going to decide to lead off with my Terrakion and my Clefable. Because my opponent's also going to decide to lead off with his Follow Me user in the form of Patrice along with his Lapras. So I'm relatively fine with this lead matchup. Is that basically my opponent can do one of two things with his Patcher. It can decide to go for Nuzzle and try and target down my Terrakion. Trying to get that para. And uh, of course, or either go for the follow me. So my safest play is definitely just to go for the follow me with my own Clefable. Just to avoid taking a potential wards type attack. Coming from the Lapras and of course that Nuzzle to try and para my Trachyon. So I'm definitely going to go for the follow me. I'm actually going to decide just to go for a rock slide on the off chance my opponent does in fact just go for a, a follow me. As I do want to get damage off on this Lapras as well. So the rock slide and follow me are my safest play. I could potentially just go for a CC however and try and get as much damage off on my opponent as I can. But I do opt to go for that rock slide, which does thankfully connect. And it does a decent chunk to both Pokemon, which is nice. As, uh, as you can see, I just got a double flinch on my opponent, which is really unfortunate for my opponent. So it's definitely a nice way to start off the tournament, getting that nice hack. But in hindsight, upon reflection, I don't think it mattered too incredibly, uh, too incredibly much. As I did go for the follow me with my cleft just to avoid any attack regardless. I'm not too sure what else that Lapras could have done. And uh, so yeah, the following turn, I'm just going to decide to go for follow me again. It is definitely my uh, safest play. I have no reason not to at this point. And what I'm actually going to decide to do, as soon as my opponent actually didn't go for follow me of his own, I'm expecting to go for a nuzzle again. So this time around, I'm actually going to decide to click close combat, just taking out the Lapras, which is great for me as uh, it was a, a decent threat, I suppose. And uh, down goes the Lapras, as my opponent does re reveal the nuzzle, which does minuscule damage to Michael Fable, of course, and of course gets the para. So now my opponent gets a free switch into his Bastiodon. I'm a little threatened by the Bastiodon as I'm not too sure what it's going to go for. So I'm just going to decide to make the switch on out into my Rotom. A little bit of conservative play and actually go for the Protect with my uh, Clefable. My opponent's also going to reveal the Protect with his uh, Pachirisu right now. So I do manage to get my Rotom inside for free. Which has a decent matchup versus Bastiodon of course. And uh, here my opponent actually reveals a Vizier. A one-hit KO move showing the gimmick that's coming out of my opponent's team, which I was extremely surprised by when I saw that, which did obviously target my Trachyon slot, which is now my Rotom. So I'm, of course, immune to that. So my, it is revealed that my opponent is running Oko moves, which, like I said, my mind was blown when I saw that. My opponent's gimmick coming out now, so uh, I definitely need to be wary, as uh, although it's in my favour for him to miss the uh, Oko moves, there is definitely that possibility of him landing. So I do need to play around that the best I can. But with the patch on the field, he is giving himself a little bit more of a chance to land an Oko move. So uh, this is unfortunate. I am just going to decide to target down the uh, Bastrodon. And uh, I should decide to go for the Ice Beam onto the Patricio, expecting a, um, a Follow Me to come out. But unfortunately, I do in fact miss the Hydro Pump. So my opponent here reveals the uh, Thunderbolt, which does nothing really to my... Uh, Rotom, and uh, I'm actually going to decide, not decide, but I'm actually going to get fully parried with my Clefable. So, in hindsight, my opponent could have probably tried to target down the Clefable with an Oko move, or even a high Iron Head if he's running that, any steel type attack. Would have been a better play than actually going for a Thunderbolt. So, uh, the Thunderbolt play was really unusual. I was not expecting that Ambassador on. 
but nonetheless my Rotom is a great uh, counter to this Bastiodon. So what I'm actually going to decide to do is uh, just decide to try and target down this Patricio now. I do know I need to get rid of this thing if I'm ordered to prevent his uh, Oko moves coming out. And my opponent's actually going to make a switch go out into his Articuno now and they just decide to go for Follow Me as uh, I am just going to decide to go for that Hydro Pump and go for the Ice Beam play like I uh, did try to get off last turn. So I do a decent chunk, thankfully uh, landing the Hydro Pump this time around, which will proc the Citrus Berry, which is great for me. And uh, I'm actually going to be able to uh, fire off an Ice Beam this time around. And uh, again, does a, a decent bit of damage. So that turn worked out perfectly for me, as uh, I managed to get off uh, a lot of free damage onto the Pachirisu. And uh, didn't take any damage of my own. However, my opponent did in fact, uh, was able to get in his Articuno for free. And uh, which I cannot target it down with a Thunderbolt, of course, because Patricio has the ability to Volt Absorb. So uh, what I'm actually going to decide to do is uh, just try to take out the Patricio, like I did mention. It is my priority at this point, as uh, it's, it's just going to go for the Protect play right Going for what I'm actually going to try and target down the Patria. But I'm just going to go for the Follow Me at this point, just to uh, redirect any attack. And my opponent actually reveals a Sheer Cold on the Articuno as well. So he has all the Oko moves here. Oh, thankfully, he did in fact miss the Clefable. Well, like I said, it is in my favor for him to miss. So uh, just going to go for that follow me. We're both going to go for follow me play. Just trying to uh, get off as much offensive uh, pressure as we possibly can. Which is uh, uh, good as I, I'm able to uh, finally land the uh, the Hydro Pump onto the Patricio and take it out. But it would be a lot better if I was exerting uh, offensive pressure with my Trachyon. As opposed to my Rotom, but nonetheless... I am in a pretty advantageous position, however it does still have the Oko moves which can easily uh, turn this game on its head, so uh, here I make a little bit of a questionable play in my opinion, my opponent goes to the Sheer Cold which uh, misses the uh, Clefable, and I actually decide to uh, go for the uh, Thunderbolt onto the uh, Articuno, which I should be going for the Hydro Pump onto the Bastiodon, this Articuno is easily checked by my Trachyon in the back, of course I have that Rock Slide which is times 4 super effective, which will take out the Articuno, so uh, I do actually realise that the following turn, as my opponent actually uh, misses the Vizier and the uh, Shea Cold. Again, like I said, it is in my favour, but I am expecting him to land one soon. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm actually wanting him to land the Shea Cold, which he finally does. Gets that Oko off onto my Clefable, and uh, down goes my Clefable now. So uh, that's pretty good for my opponent. But like I said, I do realise the following turn that I made a little bit of a mistake. So I'm going to decide to rectify that by going for the Hydro Pump on the Bastiodon. And the reason why I actually wanted my opponent to land a uh, Sheer Cold is I actually want him to take out the Clefable. That way I do get a free switch out into my Terrakion. And the reason being is once I get a free switch into my Terrakion, I can just go for Rock Slide play, which will KO the Articuno. And based off how much that Hydro Pump did, I'm pretty sure a Rock Slide will put the Bastiodon into range where if I can land a secondary Hydro Pump, I can win the game this turn. So that's the play I'm going for. So, uh, like I said, just going to go for that Rock Slide. Thankfully, I do uh, land it on both of my opponent's Pokemon. Picking up the KO onto the Articuno. And uh, more, even more crucially, getting the uh, damage off onto the Bastiodon. So, now I do know if I do land the Hydro Pump, I will win. And I do manage to land it onto the Bastiodon. And down it goes. So, that was a pretty interesting round one game. A lot of fun, actually. As I did manage to obviously win that game at 3-0. So my opponent revealing the gimmick coming out of his team, which was obviously the Oko moves. So I do apologise uh, to my subscribers. I used to see more competitive videos. Uh, no disrespect, disrespect to my opponent, but of course he wasn't using the most competitive team. So like I said, I do want to apologise for that. But of course, I you don't pick who you actually go up against. Uh, you're randomly uh, generated against another opponent based off your record. And of course, right at the beginning, everyone's record is the exact same, which is 0-0. Zero, zero. But nonetheless, I was able to get a uh, round one win, which was great for my confidence. I really did enjoy uh, enjoy the experience in the round one. Like I said, it was really nervous at the start, but I did manage to uh, get the win and uh, win 3 which is pretty nice. So uh, it does set me off uh, pretty decently. And uh, best of luck to my opponent, of course. He was a great guy. And uh, as a matter of fact, my opponent did in fact land four Oko moves in a row. I, I've just watched this vi that video before actually uh, recording this, so I will link that video down below in the description. Definitely go check it out. That was a lot of fun to watch, so uh, credit to my opponent for actually trying out this strategy. But uh, nonetheless, I was confident and I did manage to win. So if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more. And I'll be back pretty soon with round two of the Swiss round. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.